Good afternoon, my name is Duncan White. I'm the managing editor at International Fire and Safety Journal. Delighted to be here on the television stand talking to Ralph Pless. Ralph, good afternoon. Good afternoon, thanks for your time. No, it's a here. pleasure to be here. Um, I've just um, been looking at the, the way in which Telgen are working with the large-scale fire testing. I understand, Ralph, that that is uh, your baby. It is my baby now, yes. So how did you, well, were you in the wrong place at the wrong time, or was it something that I you think were... I was in the right place at the right time. It's, uh, it's probably the most fun I've had from a technical standpoint, because what we get to do is solve problems for our customers. We, they come with issues that are outside of the realm of the codes and the standards. And we look at different engineering practices and principles to then apply that to sometimes small scale, medium scale, and then ultimately large scale to prove that what the solution we believe will work actually will work. And so. In, a, in an environment that is safe and allows you to experiment. In an environment that is safe, that allows us to, to uh, experiment, that is worldwide recognized. Uh, we use, we've used different laboratories over time. Currently, what we're primarily using is Underwriters Laboratory in Northbrook, Illinois. And uh, because of some of the advantages of access and their name recognition, the recognition of, of what they do. So. And uh, viewers can see in the, in the background the uh, video running of some of the testing and the, the ability to, to test knowing that uh, if something goes wrong, you can start again, must be uh, quite um, relieving. It is. Many of the tests that you see in the background are not necessarily the smallest fires because you want to have some effect when you're to show people. But the reality is, you know, we can, a test will typically run a certain period of time unless there's a failure. And we can stop that at any time. If we need more water from the from the lab to be able to control that fire. We've got firefighters that are on site. So it's a very safe environment. And yet it uh, gives us that opportunity to push the envelope and find out where that edge is and, and make sure that we're providing good fire protection and life safety. And from a, from a client's perspective, having the ability to, to look at the um, fire protection of their proposed facilities or how they're looking to protect their assets must be hugely beneficial. It is hugely beneficial. It's beneficial from uh, multiple views. From a risk management standpoint, you know, what is my risk from a compliance standpoint? Am I in compliance with the codes, the standards, the requirements? Um, as well as just how do I make sure that I can continue my business in the event that there is a, a you know, an incident? A lot of times the codes and the standards, what they tell us is what we can do but just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do something, you know? And so the protection in a lot of cases, uh, not in all cases, but in many cases is the minimum that you should do. And what this allows us to do is in a cost-effective manner, in a safe manner, test different solutions that will provide uh, protection for the facility. And sometimes at an elevated level, better than what the code would do, hopefully with a cost benefit as well. So, um Clients with a greater risk appetite can hit the minimum required standards. Those that uh, are a little more risk averse may want to exceed those standards, dependent on how um, how happy they're going to be. Yes, that's when our yes, that's exactly correct. And our experience has been, if you can get the customers involved in really engaged in this, they tend to be they start out being you know willing to take that risk until they see what that risk is. And then they become a little bit more risk adverse and they want to be a little bit more conservative. Not always, but in many cases, they would rather provide just a little bit more because it can, it can uh, save them on business interruption. It can save them on uh, reputational risk as well as, of course, life safety. Exactly. Um, we're here at the NFPA conference. And I know that uh, NFPA has been a big part of your professional life and uh, yes. you um, contribute a lot of your time to the success of that. Give the uh, the viewers a bit of an understanding of what NFPA means to you and why it's important to the industry. Uh, NFPA has been critical in my professional development, not only from a learning standpoint uh, on the job as well as formal. Uh, you know, one of the things that I get to do now and have for many years is to be part of a technical committee, several technical committees now of how we develop the codes and how we work together 
to make sure that we have a collaborative approach so that not no one entity or segment is represented, but everybody has a, a voice. And I think that that transparency is critical in the development of, of codes and standards. And then from a training standpoint, I've, had, I've been blessed to be able to uh, provide some instruction for NFPA as well as outside. And that's, that's uh, a real value to me personally, because I learn more when I'm teaching. And I also get to contribute back to those, you know, to the, to the uh, industry. Exactly, and uh, we're sat here in the middle of uh, Mandalay Bay Convention Center, and it's reassuring to hear the buzz back in the industry. We've had yes. uh, a few years of um, the wilderness, and the industry is now getting back to the, the buzz it expects, and uh, it's amazing. I stepped out of the hall about 20 minutes earlier to get a coffee, and it's almost as though you go from that buzz back to the normal sound, and you don't realize that until you're actually in here. Yes. That the uh, people are talking again. Yes, it is great to have as many people. You know, we were very nervous when we first came back. And, uh, you know, before this is this is back to before or even better than what we've had to deal with over the last few years. And it's it's just um, it's reassuring. It's encouraging to, to see the amount of involvement and uh, participation. Exactly. I'm just going to touch on now the immersive learning. Um, I had my first experience of uh, immersive learning and the uh, the ability with the 360 degree goggles and it was uh, absolutely magical. The videos you're seeing in the background there, when you're looking at it in 3D and having the ability to look at it from a bird's eye view from where the sprinkler activates and looking below and above, it's totally unique. And I think that ability to use your full scale testing then to a training must be hugely valuable. It is very valuable. It is valuable not only at the testing level because we learn so much. There's been tests where we've run that without the 360 degree cameras, you wouldn't have been able to, to realize exactly how the fire grows and where the issues are. And then to be able to translate that and take that to you know the public and or to other professionals and share with them, this is how we create, this is how we figure out what the solutions are. Um, it is just the the reaction of the the students as well as even customers that are involved in this process has just been incredible. My name's Duncan White. I've been talking to Ralph Glass from Telgen. Ralph, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. I look Thank forward you. to catching up with you very soon.